Okay. So welcome to the second talk of the session. As before, please remain muted during the talk and you may unmute yourself to ask questions during the talk. You, uh, you may also uh, ask questions over chat if you prefer. So without further ado, we are very happy to have Tudor Dimofte from the University of California, Davis, as well as the University of Edinburgh. And he will be talking about QFTs for non-semi-simple TQFTs. Um, thank, thanks a lot, and, and thanks to all of you for, for organizing this and getting all the times to work out. Um, so um, I want to talk about some um, work hopefully coming out in the next few days, um, sometime this month, uh, with uh, Thomas Kreutzig, Nicholas Garner, and, and Nathan Gear. Um, based on and in, in initially started um, from, from discussions during an, an NSF focused research group collaboration, um, sort of related to um, a, a small paper uh, we wrote with um, a student, Jennifer Brown and, and Stavros Garofalidis last year that <clears throat> probably didn't seem physically relevant at all. Um, we're looking at recursion relations for things called ADO invariants and um, prove that they were the same as recursion relations for colored Jones polynomials. Um, all of this is, is also closely related to, um, to a paper from last year by Gukovs and Nakajima, Park, Pei, and Sopenko um, that started studying um, some non semi simple TQFTs um, in terms of Rosansky Witten theory. Um, and, and there is current work in progress by Gukov, Fagan, and, and Reshitikin, um, which uh, should be complementary to, um, to what I'll discuss today. Uh, possibly Sergey will say, say more about that, um, more about this work later this week. Um, Okay, so some 30 years ago, um, a bunch of really um, inspiring connections were established uh, between Trent Simon's theory with compact gauge group, rational vertex operator algebras, namely the WZW models um, at, at integer level, um, and representation theory of quantum groups. And this sort of gave uh, three different perspectives on what are now called quantum invariants of knots and links and, and three manifolds. A key object um, in each perspective, um, sort of a central object that everything else gets constructed from, um, is, is a certain braided tensor category um, that I'll call curly C throughout this talk. Um, and there, there are more adjectives that belong here. I think one wants a modular braided um, ribbon, et cetera, tensor category. Uh, but yes, um, those of you who have, who have studied this know, know what the adjectives are. Um, physically, <clears throat> the objects of this category are line operators. Um, <clears throat> the, the pictures one draws here are very similar to, to what um, Edward Witten drew yesterday. Um, so, so, so there he was talking about boundary conditions and said, like, there's a category whose objects are boundary conditions and the morphisms, the Hom spaces between objects are, are spaces of local operators at a junction of boundaries. Um, and so here our objects um, are line operators and morphism spaces are local operators at a junction of lines. And that's, that's the, the data that um, defines the, the structure of the mathematical category. Um, so in, in transcendence, we've got line operators um, in VOA land. Um, the category shows up as modules for 
WCW. Um, and there is there's sort of this correspondence whereby um, Sharon Simons admits to holomorphic boundary conditions supporting um, a chiral WCW algebra. Um, and by letting bulk line operators end on the boundary, we get modules for the WCW algebra. Um, and finally, on the quantum group side, this same category um, shows up um, as, as modules or representations of the quantum group um, with a, a really important caveat um, that is often overlooked, um, at least in physics. Um, it is not the full category of modules of the quantum group at a root of unity, but a massive simply semi-simplification of this category um, that I will say a little bit more about later in the talk. Um, so in, in each of this, these cases, the category involved is semi-simple. And the way to think about that physically is that there are no non-trivial local operators around. Um, Trent Simons has the identity operator, and that's it. There are no non-trivial junctions of Wilson lines because there, there, are, no, um, there are no charged operators in, in Trent Simons' theory of the right charges to uh, make at least irreducible Wilson lines connect. Um, and that, that's true modulo, as, <laughs> modulo a certain caveat involving large gauge transformations that it's, involves the level of the theory, but um, basically things you would call distinct Wilson lines do not have junctions. Um, okay, that, I, I think that's all I'll say about that. that that's, the, that's the physical manifestation of, of being semi-simple. Um, okay, so since um, the, the early 90s, um, there have been many developments and generalizations of some of these perspectives. Um, on the quantum group side, uh, people immediately started thinking about the entire category of quantum group modules at a root of unity, um, which, which is a non-semi-simple thing. Um, there are not non-trivial morphisms around. Um, and there, there are lots of complications that show up in that case. Um, the two, of, two um, of the early works that formulated quantum invariance using this, this bigger category um, were in work of uh, Akutsu de Gucci and Otsuki. Um, they, so this is the so-called ADO invariant. That is, you should think of as some generalization of Jones polynomials of links. Um, and then Libyshenko formulated an uh, entire QFT defined on, on three manifolds, on, on most three manifolds. He, he almost fully defined a TQFT um, that, that involves these, these, this bigger representation category. Um, Kashayev and Reshetikin, um, about 10 years, 10, 20 years after that, uh, observed 10 years, uh, that um, in fact, the invariance of three manifolds one gets should not just involve three manifolds topologically, but three manifolds together with a choice of a flat, complex background connection. Um, and all of this was then sort of further developed and unified in, um, in a formalism introduced by Gear, Costantino, and Patrio Mirand. Uh, 10 years ago that, that's been uh, sort of getting, uh, lots of extra structure has been built, built upon that. Um, but like th this, this more recent formalism um, sort of fills in a lot of the gaps of the early theories and, and just gives a, a big computational machine for taking any, for example, quantum group representation category, um, no matter how non-semi-simple it is, or that there's another issue with vanishing quantum dimensions in these cases um, and, and producing invariance, quantum invariance out of it. Um, so a lot happened in, in the quantum group world. Um, on, on the VOA side, 
um, the, the analog of going non-semi-simple is looking at, at logarithmic VLAs, uh, or maybe more generally just looking at not, not rational VLAs. Um, and uh, the, one of the first um, examples of these that, that's quite important in what I'll talk about today is the triplet VLA. Um, it was introduced in the 90s. Um, the triplet is associated to SL2. Um, its representation, its, its category of modules um, is equivalent to um, modules for the quantum group SL2 um, at, a, at a root of unity. The triplet depends on an integer parameter. Um, and if we generalize that to um, to, to arbitrary Lie algebras, um, we get things that are called fagin tipunin algebras. Um, so what I've denoted here is, is FT stands for fagin tipunin, um, and so so these are these are defined for any any Lie algebra, and um, it's it's finally been established that that the category of modules there not really not just as a category but as a braided um, as a braided tensor category. Um, uh, is is a, a equivalent to the category of representations of the quantum group um, at a root of unity, um, and I'll I'll point out like so so um, WZW matches like this semi simplified really tiny category of representations of quantum group at a root of unity, and the full thing is is captured by by these fake anti algebras. algebras. Um, there are also flat complex connections that show up in, in on the VLA side that, that have only much more recently started to be studied. Um, right. And so given, given all of that, one naturally wants to ask what, what's the analog in transcendence theory? Um, how do we access like, this, this big, bigger category or non-semi-simple invariants? Um, a, a natural place to look, um, which was also proposed in this paper last year by Gukov et al. Um, and, and there were there were hints of this in work by Shengchen, Ferrari, Gukov, and, and Harrison, and also involving triplet algebras. Um, a natural place to look is, is in twists of supersymmetric theories. These are very generically not going to give you semi-simple categories. Um, twists of supersymmetric theories generally have tons of local operators. Um, not always true, but, but, but often have, have tons of local operators. And, and that's, that's what you need to get something non-semi-simple. Um, I should also mention that supergroup transcendence um, is, is also a not non-semi-simple thing and, and has many similar properties. And Rosansky Seller studied that um, also back in the 90s and, and Mikhailov um, expanded on that work uh, about five years ago. Um, the supergroup direction is not what I'll talk about today, but it, it's, it's closely, it should be closely related to, to everything here. Okay. So my, my goal is to sort of fill in, fill in the field theory set. Um, our main uh, construction or conjecture is to propose a quantum field theory such that its category of line operators um, matches modules for Fagan to put in algebras and matches the full quantum group representation category. Um, now, this comes with a caveat. Um, if one is going to play around with something like a twist of a supersymmetric theory in physics, um, the category of line operators is, is a derived beast. There, there, is no, there is no choice about that. Um, there, uh, everything is cohomological. Um, and, and one works in cohomology of some supercharge and that, that leads to DG categories or derived categories. Um, and so in fact, the way this is going to match across um, involves not, not just Fagan to Poonin modules, but the derived category of that, and the derived category of, of quantum group modules. Um, so, so in fact, a, a generalization is needed on the math side as well to, to get a match. 
Um, and the theory that's involved is in some ways a, a familiar thing. Um, it's obtained by, by taking the S duality interface T of G, um, it's the 3DN equals four theory, um, gauging um, one of the G symmetries of this theory at a non-zero Trent Simons level. Um, that quite non-trivially still preserves N equals four supersymmetry. Um, and then we can take a particular topological twist, um, which I'll refer to as the A twist of, of this gauge configuration. Um, and I'll, I'll try in sort of the middle of the talk to explain why, why this is sort of the only, it's, it's the, the simplest possible solution to, uh, to the problem. It has, has all the right properties. Um, we can write down a, uh, an action or Lagrangian for, for this theory, which, which is not, and not entirely trivial, uh, but a, an, an action that, that has a BRST charge acting on it, whose cohomology gives the topological theory we want. And we work in the BV formalism to accomplish that. Um, um, and sorry, and that, that's in the case of, of when the group is SUN. Um, and using, um, using that, that very explicit action, uh, we can derive what the boundary, we, we can define a boundary condition that is holomorphic and define a boundary vertex algebra. And uh, what we end up with is not fake into Poonin in the, um, the simplest choice of boundary condition, but rather um, a dual of fake into Poonin um, so, so in fact, at the end, we, we actually find two algebras. There's fake and Tupunin and the thing we actually get um, that are dual to each other in, in the same sense that, well, in, in the sense of level rank duality, um, the same way that works. Um, there, there are two vert vertex algebras that are mutual cosets inside a bunch of free fermions. Um, and in particular, that, that means they'll, they'll have the same uh, module categories, uh, which is how, how we know we're actually Precisely, we know how, that we're getting the right thing. Um, to so it, it is right? yeah. Sorry, uh, uh, if I recall correctly, the three D action of Aganajic, uh, Costello, McNamara, and Wafa is uh, holomorphic topological. Uh, yes. How do we go from that to the topological theory? Um, I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that later. Um, okay. So, so it's a two-step procedure. So um, the um, the the holomorphic top yeah. Uh, so so one starts with the holomorphic topological twist and then deforms further to to a fully topological twist. Okay. Um, uh, but I'll try to say later why that's actually needed. Um, great. Um, so um, aside from saying very abstract things about categories, um, it's nice to do some simpler checks as well. Um, and we can compute things like dimensions or more accurately characters of Hilbert spaces um, using supersymmetric localization techniques that have been developed in the last few years, uh, or the growth and deep ring of, of the category of line operators, which is much less sensitive of the full category, but uh, but is easy to compute um, and and check that that everything matches uh, across the board. Um, okay. Um, so so I want to describe some of this, but um, I, I now want to uh, focus on quantum groups for a little bit. Um, I kept saying that there's a bigger representation category that is unfamiliar, um, at least in much of much of particle physics, um, is unfamiliar. Um, and I want to say a little bit about what it looks like. So, um, so th this has been known again since the early 90s, um, and I'll, I'll just focus on SL2. Um, quantum SL2 is a thing generated by by EF and not H, but rather K, which, which acts as 
k, k looks like q to the h um, with, with relations uh, shown here. Um, when q is a root of unity, this, oops, um, this has a, a really large center. Um, there, or rather, there, there's sort of two parts to the center. So you always have Casimir operators um, in the enveloping algebra of SL2 and also in the quantum enveloping algebra here. Um, but in addition, kth powers of the generators um, commute with everything. Um, because here, q to the 2k uh, is 1. Um, it's, there is some choice in what center elements you fix. Um, one way or another, um, if, you, if you have a central element in this algebra, you know that it will act as a constant on any indecomposable representation. Um, and so the indecomposable reps get classified by what values these constants take. Um, and that means we can sensibly ask for, for each, each value of e to the k, f to the k, and k to the 2k, like what, what representations do we get? Um, and these values, at least in terms of dimension, um, these values of the center um, sort of put coordinates on some space um, that ends up being the Langlands dual group PGL2. Um, A fancy way of saying all that is that the representation category fibers over, uh, over the Langlands dual group. Um, and there, there are subtleties, I should say. Um, so this is true for S SL2, for, for other groups, like exactly what it fibers over depends on which root of unity you're taking. Um, um, anyway. Um, here, that, that's the relevant group. Um, and, um, and the way you think about this vibration is that, again, over every point in, in, in the base, PGL2, um, the point in the base tells you what values you take for the center, for the central elements, and then the fiber is representations with those values of the central elements. Um, and here I'm just giving an, an example of how this works when uh, when you set e to the k and f to the k to zero, but uh, k to the k, k to the two k is some arbitrary C star thing, um, then you're sitting over sort of a diagonal element of, of, of PGL2. Okay. Um, the, so a theorem from long ago is, is that um, what the fiber looks like only depends on the conjugacy class. Um, in uh, in PGL two, um, and um, this this vibration structure of the category is ultimately what leads to invariance of not just three manifolds but three manifolds with a choice of flat background PGL two C connection um, that that I call curly A. Um, one way to see that is, is to, to think about what data you would need to, if, if there were a physical theory behind this, um, to add, you ask what data you would need to describe a line operator. Well, you, to describe a line operator, um, you would first choose a point in PGL 2C to, to, to fix the values of the center, and then you would choose a representation with those fixed values of the center. Um, that, that choice of element in PGL 2, um, tells you what the holonomy of a flat background connection is around your line operator. Um, or in other words, like physically, um, if, if, you, if, if you had a theory that would couple to flat background connections, you could sensibly ask, um, not just for, for line operators uh, with the trivial background, but for line operators in the presence of a vortex defect um, with, with specified holonomy uh, at, on a line. Um, and the way that the, 
the co-product works in, in this quantum group, tells you how to tensor representations together, um, and everything works out sort of beautifully um, in, in that if you tensor two, two representations together, the, the holonomies multiply. You have to do this very carefully when you're not just looking at diagonal matrices, but, but it, it works with appropriate adjustments. Um, Um, so, um, as I've sort of been saying, swapping back and forth between perspectives, um, like this sort of structure um, is, is the sort of thing you get in, in a quantum field theory that, that allowed deformations by background flat connections. Um, and also this, this sort of thing, uh, or, or some simple examples of this sort of structure where, where described um, in, in a paper by, by Victor Mikhailov on supergroup transcendence. Um, is that at least the, the first place I, I appreciated this, this sort of thing. Um, okay. um, so um, now I want to describe what fibers look like at, at two, two different points. It's sort of a generic point and a very non-generic point. Um, if we fix the values of the center so that we get um, sort of a generic abelian holonomy, and everything generic can be conjugated into such an abelian holonomy, where the parameter I've called alpha is not zero, or e to the alpha is not one, um, then um, representations with this fixed value of the center, where e to the k and f to the k are zero, and k to the 2k is e to the alpha, um, uh, the category of representations looks quite elementary. Uh, one gets a semi-simple category with 2K objects in it. Um, the, the representations all have dimension K. Um, the eigenvalues of capital K sort of wrap around the unit circle um, in such a way that they all get vanishing quantum dimensions. The trace of capital K is, is zero in any of these which lead, well, which tells you you need to regularize a bit to, if you're going to build not invariants out of this, you don't want the unknots to have expectation value zero, which is what, what the quantum dimension would give you. Um, and so one needs to regularize a bit to get sensible not invariants. Um, ADO did this, um, and it also fits into the general framework of um, Constantino Gir Patira Miran. Um, and one ultimately can construct invariants of three manifolds with flat, um, in this case, if you keep everything abelian, with flat abelian connections. Um, but it also generalizes to, um, to non-abelian flat connections as well. Um, okay, so um, this is an easy part of the category to deal with, uh, or easier. Um, one of the easy things about it is, is describing uh, Hilbert spaces on, uh, on genus G surfaces. So the, these flat connections are always around. Um, a, a, the Hilbert space on a genus G surface depends not just on the topology of the surface, but on a choice of flat connection on that genus G surface. Um, that choice of flat connection, sorry, um, uh, you can try to generate states in the Hilbert space on, on a surface by um, taking a handle body and throwing a bunch of line operators um, into the handle body. Um, so, so for a torus, you look at a solid torus and throw uh, and, and start deck putting various line operators along its core, it's standard thing one does in turn Simons. Um, and then it's easier to count the dimension of the space. The, the holonomy that you choose on the surface tells you what part of the category you have to choose your line operator from, what fiber of the category to look at. Um, anyway, um, it's, it's easy to look at line operators and all their possible junctions and come up with a, a simple formula for dimensions of Hilbert spaces. Um, um, the formula, in fact, if, the first time I saw this some years ago, it looked to me like some abelian transcendence theory was behind everything. Um, it looks like the Verlinda formula 
in U1 transdiamonds, where the dimension is roughly k to the 3g minus 3 without any, um, I mean, it, it's, it's k to the something, uh, without any subleading corrections. The, the, the Verlinda formula for non abelian groups has lots of subleading corrections. And this is just a really, really simple monomial, uh, which sort of screams of abelian transcendence. Um, it, the entire theory, however, I should say, is, is, is way more complicated that, than that. And the complications come from the braiding, which I haven't mentioned. Um, so the, the braiding is certainly not that of abelian transcendence here. Uh, but the Hilbert spaces look like they are. Um, so, so that's a generic piece of this category. Um, we can also look at the most non-generic part, uh, where we fix the central elements, um, e to the k and f to the k to be zero, but also k to the two k to be equal to one. Um, um, this is where you get non-semi-simple stuff arising, um, and the this quotient of the quantum group by those values of the center is what's usually called the small quantum group. Um, so we're getting modules for the small quantum group as our category here. Um, and physically, you should think like this is what's going to happen from line operators with no flat connection turned on, zero, zero background connection. Um, like the sort of the simplest thing you would want to do in physics is, is the most complicated part of, of the category here. Um, so there, there are two 2K irreducible representations, um, but they have extensions um, among themselves. And so there are also 2K in decomposable representations that contain the irreducible ones inside. Um, as, as various sub quotients. Um, the part of the simple representations look very much like reps of SL2. Um, and these are the ones that show up as Wilson lines in transignments with uh, compact gauge group SU2. Um, um, one, so so one, one set of representations of dimension one, two, three, um, all the way up to k minus one um, is uh, is what shows up in transignments. It's what Reshitikin and Turay have used um, to, um, to to give a quantum group reformulation of of Witten's work on on transignments. Um, and that's and so the semi simplification I mentioned earlier is killing everything else. It's saying we'll, we'll consider these representations alone and set everything else to zero. Um, Another consistent way of, well, the reason that's consistent, or way of saying that, um, is that all of the other representations in this slide uh, have vanishing quantum dimensions. Um, and, and so what you're really doing is quotienting out by everything in the category that has zero quantum dimension, or has zero a not invariant, um, and, and keeping this tiny piece that, that is finite. Um, the volume conjecture lives in the last um, irreducible representation that has zero quantum dimension um, that, that happens to, to also be a projective. Um, so, so quantum invariants computed using that are the ones that have exponential growth uh, as, as k goes to infinity. Um, it's they they come from analytically continuing the Jones polynomial, and so so in physics we often think of uh, of this sort of behavior as as coming from just transcendence theory, but it's but some analytic continuation is needed to get there, um, and the entire thing, including the indecomposable projectives, is is what Libashenko used to to define his QFT in the nineties. Um, that that was then. Um, sort of put in a more general context in the last few years. Okay, sorry. So that's um, th that's the, the big um, non-semi-simple piece of the category. Um, okay. Um, 
if we want to build a Hilbert space um, on a say a torus with no uh, with zero flat connection, then we should we could try putting line operators inside a solid torus and decorate it by objects in this category, but it's not enough anymore to just consider line operators. There are local operators around. There are morphisms between these representations. Um, and so one has to consider not just line operators, but line operators with local operators inserted. Um, and once one does that in a, what I um, sort of said should be a field theory of homological type, um, one realizes there are also first descendants of local operators that get to be integrated around bits of um, bits of the core of this solid torus. Um, and one very quickly discovers physically that, that the Hilbert space is going to be gigantic. Um, it, will, it will be infinite dimensional. Um, and the physical operation of generating states by um, cyclic configurations of line operators with local operators in between them, maybe first descendants of local operators integrated around, um, that, that entire thing um, is captured mathematically in the Hochschild complex of the representation category. Um, so in order to match any sort of physical Hilbert space, what one should compute on the math side is the, is the so-called Hochschild homology of, of the category. Um, and that, that is a straightforward, though time intensive thing. Um, it can, can be done by, by well, by, by hand in Mathematica um, for, for SL2. Um, one, so, so one finds um, an infinite dimensional Hilbert space um, that exists in different cohomological degrees. Um, each each cohomological each, each piece of fixed cohomological degree is finite dimensional. Um, and only the degree zero piece is what showed up in the 90s, um, sort of the non-derived version of this, um, which doesn't involve integrating first descendants around. It's just line operators and local operators. Um, um, so that, that's what appeared in Lyubashenko's theory, but if we're going to match with a full physical TQFT, we need the whole thing. Um, that, that infinite tower of states um, has a, turns out to have a really nice geometric description. Um, it, it looks like Delbo cohomology of T star P1, which is the flag variety for SL2. Um, or rather, it looks roughly like K minus one copies of double cohomology for, for T star P1. Um, and that, that two there is a, is a shift in cohomological grading that I'm not going to say much about in this talk. Um, but so, so there, there are details here, but the thing that I'll connect to a little later um, is, is this bit that, so we've got K minus one copies of cohomology of, of T star P1. And the reason that's infinite dimensional is, is because T star P1 is non-compact and Delbo cohomology contains just functions on the non-compact bit. There, there are infinitely many of those. Um, the character of, the other character of the torus Hilbert space doesn't care about whether a flat connection is turned on or not. Um, and so if we compute the other character of this infinite thing, um, there are lots of cancellations and we just get 2k, which is the same as the dimension computed using the semi-simple part of the representation category with generic connection turned on. Um, and the growth in degring um, has, has dimension 2k and is, uh, is so something that, that can be computed, though I, I won't say too much about it right now. Okay, um, sorry, I should say, so growth in degring is, is something that, like if, I don't know, I, in, in my experience with Trin-Simons, I would have immediately said, like the torus Hilbert space ought to be the growth in degring. Um, and, and 
the growth ending ring just gives you a piece of this that comes from line operators wrapped around the core with no local operators anywhere in sight. And, and so it's, it's a much smaller thing than the entire Taurus Hilbert space. Um, so growth ending ring is, is the part, growth ending group is the part of this that, that just detects line operators wrapped all the way around. Um, okay. So um, we're, we're looking for a three-dimensional topological quantum field theory that is labeled by a group and a level um, and is, is transcendence-like in many ways. Um, it's, it's category of line operators um, looks like, I mean, if we're going to try to match this representation theory of a quantum group, and in the case of quantum SL2, we, we want to have roughly K line operators um, that sort of behave like Wilson lines. Um, they behave like Wilson lines in a, in a more precise way in, in that or this sort of behaves like transcendence theory in a more precise way and that, that the link invariance one gets obey the same recursion relations as colored Jones polynomials do. Um, however, the category had better not be semi-simple, so there should be local operators around. Um, and we expect that the category can be deformed to other fibers um, by, by flat background connections that look like they're coming from a Langlands dual group. Um, at least in, in type A, when there, there are some choices, but for a particular set of choices, one ends up um, with the category that fibers over, when, when your group is SUN, you fiber over PSL. Okay, and, and there's, so I was claiming that there's sort of a unique minimal answer to this puzzle. Um, when can start with the S duality interface of, of Gaioto and Witten, uh, T of G. This is a 3D n equals four theory that has G times G dual global symmetry. Um, one gauges um, the G symmetry of, of T of G at a non-trivial Trent-Simons level. Um, and in, in supersymmetric terms, uh, this is a 3D n equals 2 gauging. Um, the surprise um, is that, at least in the infrared, um, this 3D n equals 2 gauging still preserves n equals 4 supersymmetry. Um, and that comes because a constraint um, described by Goethe in a written different paper uh, is satisfied, namely, um, the, the trace of the moment map squared for, uh, for the G action is, is, is in fact zero in, in the infrared. Um, if you turn on parameters, then if you turn on FI parameters, that the trace of the moment, moment map squared is constant, um, which is enough to preserve n equals four in the infrared. Um, also, the dual, the Langlands dual symmetry on, on T of G st still acts. Um, and so this gives us a physical theory with a flavor symmetry, with a global symmetry for which we can turn on background connections. Um, I wanted to mention that um, this sort of theory, before saying anything about twists, um, these sorts of theories are um, in fact with both G and G dual gauged. Um, appeared in, in Dungman's talk on, on Monday um, and, and were studied by Gan Yamazaki and um, the paper that Dungman talked about uh, by Gan Kim Lee, Shin, and Yamazaki. Um, uh, um, so so may, may I, uh, so excuse me, so may, may I give a comment? Please, yeah. Uh, so in my cases, we gauge the diagonal G, so it's uh, different from your theory. Oh, sorry. It wasn't. It wasn't both G and G dual. But it was the diagonal one. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. No. Thanks. Yeah. So they're they're slightly different, but but I. Yeah. No. They 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 seem to be in like the same family of like n equals four theories where you gauge something in an n equals two sense with a Trent-Simons level and still magically preserve n equals four. 
Yeah, yeah. but the only after the diagonal gauging, we have a length zero theory. So because of long branch and fixed branch are only put it the if we yeah. gauge the, yeah. Yes, no, indeed. So thanks. So so that, right. So one big difference, as I'm going to say, is, is that um, there in, in their work, there were no Higgs or Coulomb branches. Um, and here there are, um, which is what is going to lead to infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces in particular. Um, um, also, the, it looks like the twists we're using are, are different. So they, they had a, they used a, I, it, it looks like I, um, you guys were using a holomorphic topological twist and magically got, um, surprisingly got a fully topological theory. Um, I want to use a, a fully topological twist that uses, that really needs, physically it needs the full 3D n equals four Susie to be defined. There are two choices. Um, I call them A and B because they look like A and B twists on the boundaries. They reduce to 2D A and B twists upon compactification, and they're related to the things that um, that um, Witten called A and B twists yesterday in four dimensions. Um, so um, the the thing I'm calling the A twist is a reduction of the 4D Donaldson Witten twist, and the B twist is um, what's usually called the Rosansky Witten twist. Um, how do I know which one to choose? Well, when there's a global symmetry around, um, the global symmetry will, will allow coupling to different sorts of background connections um, in the two cases. And in the situation here, the G-dual symmetry um, is going to lead to um, a coupling to flat complexified connections in the A-twist and is going to lead to a coupling to monopoles in the B-twist. And we want flat complexified connections, so we're going to take the A-twist. Um, the the B-twist inversion of this theory is something that Kapustin and Salina studied, um, and they, they called it Trent simons rosansky written theory. Um, so th this is a, sort of a, a different twist of of Kapustin Salina. And, and it behaves completely differently. Okay. Um, so that's that's the QFT I want. Um, there, there are some physics-y things to say about it. Um, so in the when the group is SUN, um, this has a UV quiver gauge theory description um, that I, I think is familiar to much of the audience. Um, sort of a there's there's a linear a linear three D n equals four quiver um, that for t uh, of s u n would have flavor symmetry n on the last node and we're gauging that last node with uh, with a non-trivial Simons level um, the Higgs and Coulomb branches of t of s u n are flag manifolds for s l n um, the Coulomb branch is is the one that was showing up in some of the earlier examples of Hilbert spaces. Um, if we just did the A twist of T of S U N, um, local operators would be functions on the Coulomb branch, um, and that's that's the, um, this is what the Braverman Finkelberg Nakajima construction is about. Um, so it's it's sort of the the A twist is the one that's adapted to the Coulomb branch. Um, Right. Um, but we're not we're not a twisting just T of S U N. We're we're a twisting this entire thing. Um, there will be Wilson line operators coming from the Trent Simons gauge node, um, and there will be flat connections that come from. Um, physically, at least the abelian part of those flat connections come from triples of the phi parameters together with actual unitary um, flavor connections. The, those two combine together to give our, our complexified background connections. Um, yeah, uh, the, the fact that there are Wilson lines around for that 
SUM gauge node is special. Um, it will only happen when there's a non-zero transcendence level there. Um, and yeah, that's exactly what I said. Um, typically, the A-twist only has vortex lines. Um, but in, in the presence of transcendence levels, there, there are Wilson lines as well. Um, and the Coleman branch of the entire theory um, should be um, a space that, that was discussed in the paper of Gukov et al. last year. Um, so they, they looked at B twists of sigma models to, to certain spaces. Um, and, and so what I'm talking about now should be related to, to that paper from last year by, by 3D mirror symmetry. Okay. Um, so given this UV description, there are several simple verifications to be done. Um, one can compute characters of Hilbert spaces uh, by using the twisted indices of Benigni Zaffaroni um, that, that were further developed by Closet in Kim. Um, it is impossible, as far as I know, to access um, the full Hilbert space or to get the graded dimensions of the Hilbert space using supersymmetric localization like this. However, one can get the, the Euler character. Um, um, and one computes and finds uh, that the Euler characters give exactly what, what we want. Um, and we get this, this thing that looks like a fake for Linda formula. Um, for for genus G um, in in the case of in the case of SU two um, the um, the growth and degring that I um, that I wrote down earlier uh, matches what one finds by computing expectation values of Wilson line operators um, Wilson line operators on loop um, and and it it the computation goes through a beta root analysis um, of Nekrasov and Shatashvili. Um, and so that, that re reproduces the growth and degring of the small quantum group, um, which is kind of cool. Um, but there have been lots of developments uh, in the last decade um, in computing more um, sort of more refined or subtle invariants than just numbers. Um, so we can actually compute spaces of local operators and in principle should be able to compute vector, like actual Hilbert spaces um, and categories of lines. Um, the, the, there's sort of a naive prescription for what the category of line operators should be um, in, Transcendence theory, a way to express the category of lines that generalizes to this context um, is as, well, in transcendence, you, would, you might say line operators are representations of the loop group um, at level K. Um, and another way to say that is, is as loop group equivariant coherent sheaves on a point at level K. Um, and now we have sort of a transcendence theory that's coupled to T of G. Um, and the coupling to T of G gives us loop group equivariant coherent sheaves on, on some other loopy space that I don't want to describe too carefully here because uh, using vertex algebras gives a better, uh, gives a more concrete way of saying what this loopy space ought to be. Uh, but there's, there's at least a, prediction for a geometric model of, of the category of line operators. Um, there's a prediction of the geometric model for Hilbert spaces. So in, in transcendence, geometric quantization gives us the Hilbert space as, um, as zero comma P double cohomology, uh, or rather just uh, sections of, um, of the kth power of some line bundle on, on bungee of a surface sigma. Um, and the, the correction by coupling to T of G um, doesn't just give the sections of L of the K, but it's L of the K tensored with some infinite dimensional vector bundle. Um, 
within that's finite dimensional in each homological degree. Um, that that vector bundle is, is coming from the TOG part of the theory. Um, try to finish up quickly. Um, so uh, one can compute the algebra of local operators. Um, the so in transcendence theory, there's just the identity operator. Here we get functions on the Coulomb branch as local operators, and it looks like the Coulomb branch is um, is unchanged. It's exactly the same as for T of G. Um, gauging the last node in that quiver at a transcendence level doesn't doesn't do anything to the Coulomb branch as um, as a variety or as a manifold. Um, however, gauging that last node at a transcendence level will change what. Um, higher genus Hilbert spaces look like. Um, <clears throat> and just to try to connect to a formula I wrote earlier. Um, so in for when G is SL2, K minus one copies of the bow cohomology of the flag manifold was or T star of the flag manifold was showing up. Um, and uh, it was approximately that. With with this finite correction, um, and another way to say that is that we've got c to the k minus one tensored with cohomology of t star flag, um, and these are literally the pieces coming from transcendence theory SL, su two transcendence at level k that gives c to the k minus one as the torus Hilbert space, and um, the a twist of a theory whose Coulomb branch is t star flag. Um, that gives still, and that's the same as Rosansky Witten theory on the Coulomb branch, and that gives double cohomology of the Coulomb branch. Um, so there the, the are these two pieces coming together, and the answer is roughly a product, but not exactly a product. There, there are finite corrections to that. Um, doing a, a precise analysis of the sheaf thing, or the what's written two lines above, should should explain those finite corrections. Okay, um, sorry, I'll finish up quickly. Um, so <clears throat> I, I think for an, anyone who's worked on this, um, it will be clear that, that there's a four dimensional, um, there's a four dimensional, uh, in fact, a six dimensional realization of, of, of these theories. Um, so, so to get this QFT from four dimensions, one constructs a sandwich of 40 yen mills. Um, in between two boundary conditions. One of which is a Neumann boundary condition together with the K units of transcendence coupling. Um, the other one is a Neumann boundary condition coupled to T of G. Um, and the S dual of that is some modified version of a nonpole on one side and pure Dirichlet on the other. Um, the topological twist I want is induced by uh, a 40 Kapustin Witten twist, um, sort of the 40A twist on. In one of these pictures and, and the 40B tracing its S dual. Um, and then it's clear from this where Wilson lines and flat connections come from. Um, the Dirichlet boundary condition has global um, Langlands dual symmetry. Um, and the Neumann boundary condition on the left supports Wilson lines. Um, and it, again, the, the B side of this picture um, it should be related to. Uh, to what Gukov at all discussed last year. Um, and I'll say very quick things about vertex algebras. Um, so in, um, in transcendence theory, one often just says there's a holomorphic boundary condition that supports a chiral WZW model. Um, if that transcendence theory flows from a supersymmetric n equals two transcendence, that has a yang mills term as well. There is not just one, but there, there are in fact two canonical holomorphic boundary conditions one can define. Um, and they support level rank dual boundary vertex algebras. Um, level rank dual in the sense that, that they are mutual cosets inside some number of copies of free fermions. Um, and for this modified transcendence theory coupled to T of G, um, the same the same thing arises, uh, and the so the an analog of the WCW like boundary is is the is a thing that supports a Fagan to Kunin algebra, um, and and but there's a second vertex algebra around that's that's dual to it. 
Um, and the two, so fake interpolation is the thing we're shooting for. It's already known that, that, that its category of modules is equivalent to small quantum group modules. Um, this is with, with no background connection turned on. Um, and these two different vertex algebras, um, and both of them should, should have derivations in both sort of sandwich or brain constructions or field theory. Um, at the moment, it's very easy and clean to derive one of them from field theory and the other one from a 4D sandwich. Um, so um, anyway, one, one, the one that's easily derived from field theory involves taking what Kritzig and Gaiota called the Langlands kernel vertex algebra um, and doing a, and taking a coset of that at level K, according to the turn Simons gauging. Um, the fake into Poonin algebra comes more naturally by um, taking the S dual side of the brain or of, of the 4D sandwich picture, cutting, cutting that whole picture off with a third boundary condition and considering a collision of corner vertex algebras um, that thankfully has also been analyzed um, uh, in, in work of, of Christy Gaiotu and, and, and a few other papers recently. Um, and so that corner collision of corner vertex algebras construction gives some extension of the W algebra and affine algebra, which in the B twist limit uh, spits out the fig into Brunin algebra. Um, I think that precise decomposition of the fig into Brunin algebra uh, was, was proven by, by Sugimoto just recently. That's uh, Shoma Sugimoto. Um, okay, so I, I, either way, there, there are two different ways to derive boundary vertex algebras. They are different boundary vertex algebras, but they are dual to each other. Um, and I, I think that's, that's the end of what I'll say. There, there is clearly a lot left to do, um, but uh, thankfully the first few pieces of the puzzle and, and uh, checks that we're getting the right category of line operators are in place. Um, one of uh, sort of a direction that, that I think would be quite nice to explore moving forward um, is to start generalizing um, sort of modular transformations um, from Trans Simons theory to this sort of general derived setting. Um, some of them, some of that like S and T matrices acting on Hochschild homology of the small quantum group um, have been described in a few math papers. Um, it would be nice to understand how that relates to the physics um, and to, I don't know, to, to sort of put everything together into uh, a derived version of work of Costantino, Gere, Pachira, Mirand and, and all of this um, and make everything fit together and to start, I don't know, the, Start doing the same thing that was done 30 years ago with, with Trent Simons and WZW and quantum groups, so computing things from all different sides and um, seeing how, how they match. Um, right. Anyway, uh, that's, that's the end of the talk. Thank you. So we'll just thank uh, Chudo for the very nice talk. Uh, so now, if anyone has any questions, comments, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask the speaker. Oh, okay. Yeah, then, then I have one question. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for such a beautiful talk. Uh, this is an exciting story. And uh, but my, my question is about uh, the local operator. So you said that the, it's a non semi simple, so there is a local operator uh, where the so what, what, what was in can you describe those local operators explicitly in this uh, twist of this TNK theory? Is it like a buck there? You, you twisted it so it's a topological theory, library. There is no still no such local operator, but uh, oh, I mean, there are tons, right? Okay. So, um, if I mean, it's because the target is so, so a simpler model of this is, is to just think of Rosansky written theory, the, or the B twist of a sigma model. Um, if, if the target is non compact, then 
um, holomorphic functions on the target, the, the chiral ring right, is, is going to come up as like is going to be local operators that survive the twist. So sorry, that's maybe the way to say it. So, so if you just take T of S U N and do the A twist, the Coulomb branch chiral ring is an infinite dimensional thing that is local operators in that twist. Um, I see. It, it has a nice feature that, um, the, so the cohomological grading comes from one of the R symmetries. Um, and it, it's the R symmetry that rescales the non-compact direct, or it's a U1 inside the R symmetry that rescales um, the non-compact part of the Coulomb branch. Um, the degree zero part, or the, the local operators that are invariant under this R symmetry, um, uh, just include the identity, that's it. Um, and, and so in degree zero, um, the only local operator is the identity, or in other words, the sphere Hilbert space is one dimensional in, in degree zero. Um, and that's sort of the familiar part. Um, but on top of that, there is an entire tower in, in higher homological degree. I see. So, so that's, that's a particular feature of non-compactness. Like, uh, for, for example, let's suppose that you start with the compact and then try to take a decoupling limit, et cetera, and somehow in, in the decoupling limit, uh, all these non-compactness um, appear. Right. So it will be... Um, Um, this so so if if we're just if we're doing like twists of sigma models, um, then if the target is compact, the um, local operators will be finite dimensional, uh, but they may not be trivial. Uh -huh. um, here it's it's nicer. So um, sort of the, the non-compact is sort of equivariant or has to do with the homological degree, um, and the compact part gives you something trivial. You, um, there you get just the identity. Um, nice. Um, so in the TQFTs that mathematicians have defined based on quantum group representations, they just work in degree zero. Um, and their sphere Hilbert space is one dimensional, as you might expect in a Trans-Simons like thing. Um, however, in order to relate this to physics, I think there is no choice but to consider the entire tower. Um, right. and, and there should be a generalization of what mathematicians have done that, that includes that entire tower. I see. And that is yet to come. Or well, you yourself are developing uh, that, that type of story? Or? It, it is. It, it is. Like we we say some preliminary things about it now. Um, I, I think actually it, it depends which which mathematicians you ask so or wh whom you ask. So um, in work in just very abstract work on homological TQFT by like, Jacob Lurie and that that school of mathematicians, they work in this homological world from the outset. Um, all of their categories are DG categories and everything is true up to homotopy. Um, and, and so one can find in principle the right structure to describe such a TQFT in their work. Um, here we're dealing not with the very abstract thing, but with something very concrete. Um, and I, I think there is going to be some work involved in applying those ideas to this, this particular setting. Um, there is a paper that's quite nice by Schweigert and, and Voike um, just a few years ago that also abstractly, but in, in a more, um, sorry, that, that sort of ex describes what sort of structure one of these derived TQFTs is supposed to have um, with coming not from the Lurie perspective, but from the, like, we have a quantum group representation category that we want to consider the derived category of. Um, they, they don't really do examples in this paper, um, but, but they, they do say more concretely like what, what the framework is. And, and so what I think would be really neat is to start like, filling in gaps in that framework with this particular very concrete physical field theory. Okay, thank you. Um, 
I have a question. Ask a question. Yeah. Go ahead, please go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so in, in your 3D animal fossiliary, so after the gauging, so you only have a clone branch, but uh, no Higgs branch. And then, and then, then you did uh, some A twisting or something, and you get uh, some uh, nice emission pearls, some topological fossiliary. What about doing some B twist? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so you can, and you um, you will uh, you will get something else. You will get this thing that that Rosansky and sorry that Kapustin and Salina studied. Um, it. Um, Um, I, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, I, I don't actually know what, if the category is semi-simple or not, I would suspect not, sorry, I, sorry, I would, I, I would suspect that it is semi-simple, um, just because there's no Higgs branch. Um, there's nothing else that's going to come from the Trent Simons gauging. You're, you're not going to get local operators. Um, so you will get uh, some conventional component uh, TKFT in that topological twisting. I yes, at least more conventional. It may it may not be unitary. Um, oh okay. Um, I I think I think all, all these questions need to be be investigated <laughs> in 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 these twists, but um, be, because they're often little like what what. Um, Kapust and Salina do is actually resolve the um, resolve the Higgs branch and then gauge it. Um, and, and when you turn on FI parameters, you have to you have to ask yourself, sort of like you were doing in your talk, um, like are, are are you actually turning on them on in a unitary way or not, um, or are you secretly analytically continuing them? Um, anyway, so um, but but you get something very very different that. Just like if you have a two-dimensional sigma model, the A twist and the B twist look very different. There, there is no reason to expect a, these to look at, at all the same. Oh, thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'll just ask a question. Um, so for this uh, four-dimensional setup, uh, in the usual case of just having Chen Simon's theory or other analytically continued Chen Simon's theory being realized um, at the junction of a DS5 system, um, if one takes a T duality to get a cigar, one essentially arrives at uh, the dimensional reduction of the system which gives you the 3D 3D correspondence. So, in that, in, can we do something similar here and get a 3D 3D correspondence? Y yes. So that that's that's the perspective. Um, that that Gukaf et al took um, last year, um, and in fact, I, I, I imagine that that's where much of their motivation was coming from. Um, I I think that really only works well at generic twisting parameter psi. Um, you you want to be able to move the Trent Simons. Um, so, so in one of these pictures, there was an, a Neumann boundary condition with k units of boundary transignments coupling, and, and that had to be quantized. It's, it's a three-dimensional transignments term. Um, but you can sort of move that off into the bulk and analytically continue to general psi parameter um, and then lift it. And, and indeed, if you, you end up with the setup for the 3D, 3D correspondence, um, or, or rather with um, you, you end up with something on a cigar in, in six dimensions um, with some flat connection at, at the end of the cigar, or, or maybe I, it's, it's I, I, either that or, the, or there will be an S duality interface and, and a flat connection, uh, which, which is, is very much the setup for like the homological blocks that, that Gukaf et al. Have, have been using. Um, and and so so yes, it's closely related. The hard part there, um, or the very subtle thing, is going from generic psi to the thing you need to get transcendence level k on the boundary, um, and that that limit is not regular. Um, and yeah, it's it's uh, 
like it might be possible to com to compute some things there and then take the limit, but and it will involve some sort of regularization. But if you're asking about like a category of line operators, that that's that jumps dramatically. Um, as as you're as you're specializing psi to an integer or And, and these uh, non-semi-simple quantum groups, uh, are they related to the VOA in the same way that uh, this paper by uh, Alexei Fariv and Semenov Tianshansky, where they showed that uh, the, uh, the quantum group is sort of a discretization or regularization of the catch media algebra. So for non-semi-simple quantum groups, is there a similar relation to the VOA? Um, I, would, I, I would think so, but I, I Shooting, shooting an email to Thomas Kurtzik would be, uh, would be a better way to get the right answer to that. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Comments? Okay, if no, let's thank the speaker once again.